Hi guys, today we are talking about quantum physics and we are discussing the Compton effect. So in this problem it says a 1.7 times 10 to the negative 12th meter photon which is uh, this right here, okay, so this is your incident photon incident photon uh, collides with this electron at rest, okay, so this is at rest resulting in a scattered photon, which is this right here, that's what this little mark means, and this means incident or um, initial photon wavelength. Okay, so anyways, uh, so it results in a scattered photon and a recoiling electron. So this electron is going to shoot out down here, okay? Um, so it was at rest, now it's got kinetic energy. All right, so the energy of the scattered photon, which is this, so we'll say the energy of this is equal to the kinetic energy of the electron. All right. So find the scattered photon's wavelength as well as the scattering angle, which is theta. All right. So I've got like a little simulator here just to show you what's going on. So we've got our uh, photon right here. And this is the initial photon, the incident photon. It's going to come into here and it's going to hit this electron and magic is going to happen. So you see how it bounces off and it acts as an inelastic uh, collision. And so uh, this incident photon is going to give this electron some energy and it's going to uh, be in the form of kinetic energy. And this wavelength right here is going to increase uh, resulting in a lower energy state and a lower frequency state. Okay, so talking about conservation of energy, we know that uh, the energy, let's say the energy of this incident photon, okay, so that's part one, plus the rest energy of this electron right here, okay, that is going to equal the resulting factors of what happens, okay? So what happens to this photon? Well, what's going to be left of it is the scattered photon, okay? So the energy is going to be like this. And now we've got this electron. So we have the, the, the resting electron or uh, the energy, the rest energy of this electron. And uh, it's going to equal, okay? Well, you know that the, the an incident uh, photon right here, the energy of this incident photon, some of it is going to obviously be absorbed uh, into this electron and it's going to result in the kinet kinetic energy. So basically you've got your rest energy of the electron plus the kinetic energy of the electron. Okay, So we just, uh, we can cancel these out, these rest energies. And what you're left with is the incident photon's energy is going to equal the scattered photon's energy plus the kinetic energy of the electron, which is right here, okay? And this is going to be here, and this is going to be here, okay? So now that we have done that, uh, it's time to break down some things. So we know that the photon, uh, the scattered photon's energy is equal to the kinetic energy of the electron, right? Okay. So you could say that since we know that this, uh, the energy of the incident photon is equal to kinetic energy plus that, it's the same thing as saying that this incident photon's energy is equal to 2 times the scattered photon's energy. Because remember, the, the, the scattered photon's energy is equal to Ke. So it's just like saying EO equals 2 times uh, the scattered photon's energy. 
So when you do that, uh, we can rewrite the energy. Uh, what, what, something else is you need the energy of uh, your instant photon is equal to h times c divided by the associated wavelength, which is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. Um, scattered, your know, scattered uh, energy is equal to h times c divided by this uh, scattered wavelength. All right, so now we just we just set these up, okay? So we say do a different color here. So now we say h times c, and we are using this is for EO. Okay, h times c equals the wavelength of the incident photon is going to equal so EO equals two times e, right? So we say two times this, okay, so we say 2 times hc divided by the wavelength, the scattered wavelength, okay, so let's do, so we need to find the scattered wavelength, so we say the scattered wavelength is going to equal, because this is going to come up here, um, 2 times hc, and of course you've got this hc which is going to come down here, and you've got your uh, initial or your incident uh, wavelength, which is going to go up here, times initial. So the HCs cancel out, and you're left with the wavelength, uh, your scattered wavelength, equals 2 times your initial wavelength, okay? And so we just say 1.7 times 10 to the negative 12 times 2 and that is going to equal 3.4 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. Okay, all right, so that's just kind of, um, that might take a little while uh, to get your head around, but once you get it, it becomes less confusing. <laughs> okay, so now uh, we need to rewrite for this equation right here, and we need to find the theta. So we've got uh, the theta, actually, let me start over here. We got this uh, the delta uh, wavelength equals h times the mass of the electron times the speed of light multiplied by 1 minus cosine theta. Okay, so uh, we can throw this MC up top and we can throw the H on the bottom. So you get uh, delta wavelength times the mass of an electron times C divided by H equals 1 minus cosine theta. Okay. And after you do that, uh, you are going to get cosine. You, Basically, you're going to add cosine to this side. So this is going to be coming over here. And you're going to subtract this to over here. So what it looks like is cosine theta equals 1 minus uh, your delta wavelength times your mass of the electron times C divided by H. Okay, and now we just need to get theta. So, so we say theta equals the inverse of cosine. Okay, so we say cosine negative one, right, times one minus, and be very careful with these parentheses. Uh, so one minus uh, your delta wavelength which is just, uh, well, basically, okay, so obviously we know that any time it's delta, you just say uh, your wavelength final minus your wavelength, oops, uh, wavelength initial, okay. So our final was our scattering photon, um, which we said was 3.4, and our initial was this 1.7, 
So 3.4 minus 1.7 gives you a 1.7 times 10 to the negative 12th. Okay, so you take that 1.7 times 10 to the negative 12th, right? Times the mass of electron, which is 9.11 uh, times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms, and then times the speed of light. Okay, uh, which is 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then you've got H, which is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, and second one, and you will get theta. And so I put that over the calculator. You got cosine, uh, the inverse of cosine times 1 minus, and then this function. And it leaves us with 72.6 degrees. Okay. So that is going to give us, so we say theta equals 72.6 degrees. And if you looked at that, um, this, uh, well, it, this video real fast. Um, this isn't exactly, but you can say this is 90, and if it leaves at that, it's going to be about 72.6. And that is how you solve that problem.